Hey everyone, uh, Jeremy here. It's uh, Tuesday night and we're gonna create some art. Um, as you can see behind me, I, I dumped all the pictures because I figured, you know, it's it's June now. I've been doing this for six months. Might as well, uh, you know, continue along this journey of creating art every day um, with, uh, you know, starting fresh with new walls. Uh, actually, some of, the, some of the artwork is probably gonna go back up. I just wanted to take it all down and do like an evaluation and figure out like, I don't know what art I like, what I don't like. And I'll put, I'll put back up the good ones, but as you can see, I don't like any of them so far, <laughs> but I'll end up putting some back up there. So uh, what are we working on tonight? Uh, it's been a while since I've done a horse portrait and uh, I kind of have this new, new thing that I've been doing where I, um, I paint with acrylics on the paper to kind of give it like a, like an underpainting. So I'm going to try to do that with a, uh, a horse photo. I don't know what my dog's doing back here. <laughs> the dog doesn't like the new setup. Um, I, I see Trusted Living's in the chat. Uh, shout out to Trusted Living. Um, but if it's okay with you guys, I'm just going to jump right in and start creating art. So uh, let me go to, yeah, so I've got my canvas set up here. Go lay down. Go lay down. Dog's messing with the cords. Um, so I'm going to jump in and uh, start putting down some paint. So uh, I've talked a bit in the past about like how the only really co the only colors I really use are these um, these uh, primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, uh, and then also white and sometimes black. I don't usually use black all that often, but somehow I'm going to mix these colors and get kind of like a brown out of this. Hopefully, um, we'll see how it goes. You guys know how, how it goes on this channel. I just kind of experiment and stuff like that. So I'm going to mix. Um, first, I'm going to put all the colors together because I think that that'll create a brown. And then I'll probably have to adjust that brown quite a bit. And the reason why this creates a brown is because um, yellow and blue make green. And when you add red to green, it kind of neutralizes it and creates kind of like a brown. So far, this kind of looks a little purple. So let me add some more yellow. It doesn't have to be a perfect brown. I'm happy with just a brown. Let's see. Let me move this just a slight bit. I wasn't really prepared today. Hey, uh, Brick Maniac. How's it going? Let's see. Going to add some white in here to kind of get like a lighter brown. All right, so that's starting to lighten up. It's hard to see on camera, but uh, we've got kind of a brown going here. But it's a little too yellow for my taste, so I'm going to add some red to it. Kind of get like a, like a little bit more orange. I think we're getting close. Like, it doesn't have to be a perfect brown, because probably end up having to remix it here in a minute. So I think that's pretty good. Lighten it up a little bit. This is just going to give us a background and kind of a base color for our horse. And as you can see, all I did was just kind of mix those colors together. All right, let's see if I can get a wash going here. Yeah, so that's kind of brown. I'm happy with that. Real thin wash. I'm kind of going overboard. I kind of want it to dry fast too. So this is acrylic paint. Um, I use this sometimes with my charcoal pictures. This will be like a charcoal picture. Um, this is almost like a flesh stone. Like I, I could do like a, a person portrait if I wanted to with this. We're not doing Jar Jar Binks tonight. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar is the worst, isn't he? Like, he's probably one of the most hated characters in the entire history of Star Wars. So as you can see, once you run out, you can just mix more. Um, and since I kind of have the paint still here, I kind of can base the new paint on that. I should mix more. But see, it's okay if like the um, 
the uh, the color isn't perfect because I kind of want some variation. So this is going to be a little bit yellowish, but that's okay because I kind of wanted some highlight through here anyway because this is kind of where the horse's face is going to go. So if it's a little bit yellowish, that's okay. Hey, Angela, how's it going? Hey, kid. Yeah, that hot sauce challenge, that kicked my butt. <laughs> that was that was definitely a challenge. Um, for those of you guys who may be watching this later who have no idea, I went on a hot sauce challenge last night, and uh, I didn't realize this was like, this was some serious hot sauce. Um, I think the... Uh, the um the top one had like ghost pepper in it and some of the uh some of the not so hot ones they weren't that bad actually they were kind of sweet uh, there was like a mango one that one was really good I, I had that on a sandwich today um but the one that kicked my butt was definitely that ghost pepper that's some hot sauce <laughs> Trigger some bad memories here. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so I don't, I don't actually mind this being a little bit yellowish. Like I said, it's nice to create some variety in the, uh, in the underpainting, because a lot of this is gonna be covered up anyway by the actual portrait. So I'm not too concerned about it. Basically, I just want some toned paper. So I kind of like that, but I also want some areas to kind of just naturally be a little bit darker. Again, I should have mixed a lot of paint just so that I could have some consistency. But, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this uh, paint mixing process. As you can see, it's not that tough. Um, you just got to kind of basically know some general principles of color theory. And I don't claim to be an expert on color theory, but I know enough to get by. Like when you mix these colors together, they turn brown and then you can mix some white with it to uh, kind of decide how light the brown should be. So I want this to be kind of a darkish brown because I kind of want to create almost like a vignette. I think that's how you pronounce it. Just kind of darken some of these outer sides. Hey, Toxes. To toxes? Hey, yeah, uh, because I can. Appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this Tuesday night. I know you guys have a lot of options and how you can waste your time. I appreciate you choosing to waste your time with me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of like that color, right? I think it's going to make a nice uh, background for this horse, this horse's face. At some point, I've got to draw like a full-sized horse full-bodied horse i haven't i haven't done that in a minute there you go so i, I think that's a good under underpainting i've been practicing with these underpaintings i'm not much of a painter um but you know i can i can paint within the lines i've been practicing painting in general hey i'm happy with that so i'm done with the painting let me throw that to the side because we're done with that um, I'm going to use my hairdryer to dry it. Um, I don't think that's going to create a lot of noise, but I won't be able to talk while I'm doing it. So bear with me. And while I'm drying this real quick, it, it only takes like a minute. Uh, I'm going to have some more wine. There you go. So it does need to be like super dry to work with charcoal on it and stuff. Hopefully that wasn't too annoying for you guys. But how's your guys' week going so far? Mine, 
That's turning out okay. All right. Uh, while you guys are thinking of how your week's going so far, uh, the next step that I usually do when I'm doing these pictures is I come in with like some charcoal powder. Now you can buy charcoal powder at the uh, at like the art store. Um, I make my own. All I do is take a charcoal stick and kind of sandpaper it down. Um, but like whenever I sharpen a charcoal pencil, I like to keep the uh, like the powder that comes off of that. But it it makes it a lot cheaper than just buying uh, charcoal powder. I've got a lot of charcoal powder here. I, I didn't mean to put down that much, but anyway. Oh, you saw you saw uh, Spider Man. That's awesome. What'd you think? I don't want to throw out any spoilers or anything, but I love that movie. That movie was incredible. So at this point, I'm just kind of like throwing down some shadow where I think the horse's face might be. This kind of like lets me know kind of the composition of my work, um, and kind of where things might be. Kind of helps set some uh, guidelines for me as I go into uh, draw. I'm not too worried about where all this goes because I can just like pick some up and erase it. That is way too much charcoal, so I'm going to try to mop some of that off. Let's see, how can I do that? Let's see if I can just kind of get back in there. <laughs> I'll just do it this way. I'll have to clean my table later. There you go. It's a messy job, guys. Oh, the uh, the effort put into the animations on that movie is incredible. Oh, yeah, because I can, her, her houses were, like, really incredible. I completely agree. All right, so that kind of gives me an idea of where my general horse's face is going to be. i clean up some of my mess here. All right, so now I'm going to just kind of come in and kind of kind of sketch out where I think things might be. I think the end of the nose is going to be kind of like right here, maybe. I think, I think the side of his body is going to be kind of right here again I'm not worried about like getting these lines perfect or anything at this point it's not even lines really it's just shapes so I, I do think that this is going to be kind of the nose of the horse which means I like drawing horses I draw a lot of horses on this show Usually I draw horses whenever, um, when, whenever I'm trying to like figure out, uh, a new way of doing something. And lately I've been doing this whole painting a background thing before, um, doing a sketch over it. So I just kind of want to continue practicing with that and see where all I can take it. Um, people have been kind of responding pretty well to it, I think. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Like, on YouTube, you never really know, um, uh, what people will respond to. And, like, the, the whole YouTube algorithm doesn't help much because they try to figure out who might want to see your, your art and put it out to them. But, you know, how, how, what kind of keywords should you put on these type things and, to trigger that algorithm, I have no idea. I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. So sometimes I put something out and it'll get like a lot of views and then sometimes not so much. But I don't think that's really the quality of the art itself. I think that's more YouTube being confused on who to show it to. Oh, okay. Cool, Toxas. Um, appreciate you stopping by if you're taking off. So the head would come up here. I want to make sure I get all of the horse in here. Like, it'd be kind of weird 
not to have his ear. So I think the ear is going to come off of. I'm going to draw a line. I kind of want the ear to be here. And then that would make this have to come down a little bit here. Yeah, I think that's about right. And then horses are tough. I spend a lot of time practicing horses just because I live around horses so much and the people around here want you to draw horses. Um, like if, if I ever uh, wanted to show my artwork in this town, <laughs> it's, it's got to have some horses in it. Um, which, I, you know, the, it's a dream of mine. I always thought it would be kind of cool to go to like an art show or something like that and show off my art. But around here, you know that song, um, you know, if, if you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. Um, if you're going to show your art around here, you have to have some horses in it. <laughs> it's just the way things are. So I draw a lot of horses. I like horses. Fortunately, around here, I get to see so many horses. Um, and you guys are just having a conversation with yourself in the chat. Uh, if there's anything that you guys want to draw my attention to, you let me know and make sure you at me. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue trucking along here. So this comes down here. So the horse's anatomy is pretty interesting compared to like dogs and other things that I draw, like definitely different than human beings. Um, see, they've got this little round cheek. Again, I'm not 100% sure where I want all these things, so I can move any of these shapes later. They're just shapes. They're going to all be blended out anyway. Yeah, trusted that picture you did of me was so incredible and so unexpected. I, I thought that was the coolest thing. Um, not to uh, diminish anybody else's artwork. Um, they, they were all like phenomenal. But when I saw that, I'm like, <laughs> no way. That's funny. Because I know sometimes I watch... Um, I watch YouTube shows and I kind of want to draw the host and everything. So they, <laughs> for me to see somebody drawing a picture of me, I'm like, oh, wow, well, I made it. <laughs> I made it, guys. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want that there. So, yeah, there you go. So um, these pictures that I've been doing, I don't know if it works for everything, right? So like I was thinking about doing another dog and I don't know how I would do it like a light dog on this. I'm going to have to work on that and figure that out. Um, like maybe a light dog should just really be on like, you know, white paper or whatever instead of like tone paper, but I'll have to think about that. Drawer's block, 100% all the time. I do. Um, every day, especially, so, especially when I'm doing the live streams, um, I have, uh, I definitely have, a artist block where it, it's tough because like one, it's gotta be something that I'm interested in drawing. And two, it's gotta be something that I, I think you guys wouldn't mind watching, you know? So like, if I just wanted to draw something, I could, I could draw something. I mean, you know, there's all these things around me. I'll, I'll just draw this room I'm in. Um, but I don't think anybody really wants to watch me draw the room I'm in. Uh, maybe they would. I don't know. But um, so I definitely have trouble coming up with things to draw in general sometimes. But also I have trouble coming up with things that I think that someone on YouTube might want to watch, you know, so that's tough. Like, I don't mind drawing just an apple just to practice drawing an apple, you know, but does anybody really want to sit here and watch me draw an apple? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you guys do. You guys want to see me draw an apple? <laughs> I'll draw an apple. And then the other thing is, um, you know, it really depends on what you're drawing for. So like, I'm, I'm trying to 
get better at drawing things that people would want in general. So, or, or just want to see. So like, I really want to draw pets um, because like, I, I really do feel strongly about my, my stated uh, dream, which is to draw people's pets um, when their pets pass away. Is, is like a service. I, I really want to do that. That That's my ultimate goal. That's what I'm building up to. Um, but just like drawing animals in general, I get a lot of joy out of that. I forget what my point was. So you can see the process here is I'm not really being really precise with anything I'm drawing here. Um, I'm just kind of blocking out shapes, which can be pretty easy. It could be like just scribbling because um, later on you kind of blend this and refine those shapes. So it's okay if you're just kind of like scribbling on the page at this point. That's what I'm telling myself at least. So doesn't have to be precise, doesn't have to be, you know, really great art. This kind of stuff frustrates people because they're like, I don't know, they look at this and they're like, well, that doesn't really look very technically correct and all that stuff. But you're just, you're just blocking out shapes at this point. You know, you come back and add details and stuff later. And then at some point you kind of blend all this stuff in. And, and what I really like about this, um, one of the things I've noticed when I've been doing these uh, these things on a uh, toned paper background is that I get these really soft shapes at first. And then, you know, I come back and kind of refine them a little bit, but they still kind of stay soft. Like some of these other pictures that I've been doing where I, I go back and look at them later. I'm like, I really like how soft these pictures are. In fact, there's a, I can name in the last two pictures I did of, um, both of them were horses. Um, there was a point where I should have just like stopped and not added more detail. I should just let it stay soft and, and kind of out of focus in some areas. Like I actually, um, did worse by adding more detail. Cause like, I like, like on this, the face should have detail in it, but this body down here that I'm doing, I really shouldn't have it. So remind me, don't put a lot of detail down here in this body as I go along. I'm counting on you guys. Yeah, I mean, it really depends on what you're drawing on whether or not you, you need, like, photo references. If it's something that you're not familiar with at all, there is no shame in, in you know, relying on uh, photo references. Now, could I do a horse um, without any photo reference? Yeah, probably at this point. I've drawn so many of them. But if I hadn't, if I haven't, um, if I'm not in the habit of drawing horses, then... I mean, I would almost need to uh, have like some sort of photo reference. And also there's, there's no real reason why you have to stick to the photo reference. Like I keep a photo reference up often without even drawing what I'm seeing in the photo reference. I just keep it up to kind of remind myself, oh yeah, you know, horses do have that kind of feature or something like that. Uh, same with like when I'm drawing, um, uh, portraits, like uh, human portraits. Um, I, I don't really want it to look like the picture that I'm uh, looking at so much because that's a photo. I don't want to copy the photo. That's somebody else's work. But I use it for like inspiration as far as like where the light is on something. So like, <clears throat> I really do think that if you're just imagining lights and stuff like that, you're probably going to end up with a uh, not as great picture than if you actually um, had like a live model sit for you or if you had a photo to go off of or something like that. So that <clears throat> you can arrange all of those uh, light sources and kind of have something to, to look at as far as um, how the light plays on, uh, like say this horse's face. So I can imagine that there's sun up here in the corner or over here or something like that. 
and that that'll work to an extent but i'll also miss some of the subtle details about how you know a sun being over here kind of creates shadow on this little ridge here unless i know all the anatomy of a horse which i do not you know like unless i'm like leonardo da vinci studying you know skulls and stuff of animals so that i can get that kind of um anatomy in there there's really no shame in looking at a uh, reference picture when you don't have the anatomy memorized i could probably do a portrait of a person because i've drawn enough of those where i won't i wouldn't have to look at any sort of a uh, reference photo but certainly when it comes to horses i have to remember like there's this whole muscle structure here in the neck right that kind of comes down i probably am uh prone to neglect that this this beautiful muscle that just kind of comes down and gives that horse's neck so much support like i could probably figure out that a horse's head looks like this but uh all of this this structure <laughs> how do you pronounce that packer jack i was trying to pronounce that last night so what packer is referring to is the uh the name of the hot sauce that we were doing in the uh, hot sauce challenge. I have no idea how to pronounce it. I'm going to try it. But Jalokia. But Jalokia hot sauce. So this ridge, for example, or like this muscle structure here in the neck, um, I can look at the reference photo and I know it's basically going to line up with his snout or horse now, whatever it is. Um, would I have been able to do that from memory or like from imagination? No, probably not. Something's going to be out of proportion if I tried. Something's going to get screwed up. And since I, uh, since I do a lot of like relational mapping of uh, shapes, uh, that would be tough to do from imagination. So like, there's like tools that you can use for um, drawing a, a human's face from imagination. You know, people do it when they draw like comics and stuff like that, uh, where you draw like an oval and you draw the lines and stuff. And you know that, you know, halfway down between the uh, top of the head and the bottom of the head, that's where your like eyes and eyebrows and all that stuff's gonna be. You can do that to create a character from scratch that's fine. Um, you know, maybe I should actually do that sometime just to kind of show off how it works. Um, that's, that's fine for creating something from imagination, but I prefer to like, you know, use some of these other techniques because like, I'm not always going to be drawing a, um, like a person. Right. So like, I need to be able to like draw shapes and, and things like that. Uh, because, of the type of things that I'm interested in drawing. Uh, the way I work, um, I like to think that for better or worse, probably worse, uh, I could sit down and kind of like make my way through drawing basically anything because it's all just shapes and how the shapes fit together and things like that. But also, I'm not drawing like comics or anything like that. I would love to be able to draw uh, like entire comic book panels and stories and stuff from scratch without any kind of reference material. But don't kid yourself. Those people who um who draw comics, um, they they rely on reference material as well. Like everybody has to look at reference material at some point. Uh, this one guy, I forget his name, very famously uh, got in trouble or at least criticized, uh, it's not technically like plagiarism for him to, um, to do this. But anyway, the, the guy was drawing um, uh, female characters in comics and he was relying on like, um, I don't know, like adult magazines and things like that as his reference material. And it was pretty obvious, like they were able to like say, oh, this one definitely came from this, this, uh, this adult magazine. And uh, it was a little embarrassing, I'm sure for him. Um, but that just goes to tell you, like, even, even professional comic book artists, uh, they also rely on, um, references like 
if you're a professional painter and you're doing somebody's portrait, obviously you're going to want that person to sit in front of you or you're going to want to take photos of them or something like that to work off of. I, I think, um, I think drawing from imagination is like, if you're just, you know, practicing to do that or something, or if you're creating a, um, a character completely from scratch, I, I can see drawing from imagination being, uh, something of value. Not sure if, um. I'm going to find myself in those type of situations. But if I do, I really wish I would have like learned to draw from imagination. Maybe I should practice. Hey, rum dog. think his mouth actually goes that far down. Where's my uh my razor? I'm gonna try to lift some of that charcoal up. Yeah. Give that mouth a little bit big. So anyway, trucking along here, kind of keeping things soft until I get committed to them, which I'm not. I'm not committed to any of these shapes yet because right now I, I can pivot and uh, take the source in a totally different direction because all of this is just a bunch of soft shapes at this point. So I know that somewhere around here, there's this kind of line that kind of comes down. And I think that this should probably go over a little bit. I think that's a good distance down from the mouth. Cool. There's so much um, anatomy in the um, in the uh the the chest area of a horse so many different muscle groups let's see all of this let me just get a line going here just to remind myself that there's more there's more body there this is going to be more highlighted though, because actually the, I think the sun is coming down kind of like off this, this side here. Horses are fun. I know that not everywhere in the, in the world, um, but even uh, in the United States, has horses some of you guys might be city dwellers but I, I think even in like um you know like new york and central park and stuff they have like horses for like mounted police or something so yeah there's probably horses everywhere human beings have a special relationship with horses and dogs Not, not so much cats. <laughs> well, that's not true. Cats are important as well. Especially like back in the day to keep off diseases and stuff from like rodents. Cats were, cats were pretty important. I'm pretty happy with most of these proportions. So I always like draw the snout 
too short. But I think I'm good here. So I'm leaving this area here kind of light because there's going to be like a like a blaze, uh, like a streak across his nose. So I don't want to deal with that right now. Anyway, drawing the charcoal is like a lot of fun just because you really do just create all these like little soft shapes. Kind of block them in and then kind of refine them. I guess you could be doing this in paint as well. Probably would be doing something similar. I don't know if you would be doing this if you were working in pencil. Maybe, maybe if you were like, I don't know, used to drawing in pencil this way. By pencil, I mean like graphite. Obviously, I'm using charcoal pencils. But I really, at least the way I, I do things, I like to get all of these different, um, you know, like tonal values in, get all the different shadows, come back, um, get some of that, those highlights in there, which I'll probably start doing here in a moment. Oh, well, I'll say it again. Hey, uh, Rum Dog. Pretty cool. This is actually, <laughs> from what I hear, um, there are quite a few dogs that watch this show. <laughs> you could probably, like, if you have to go to work or go out for a bit, you could probably leave this show on one of these live streams. To entertain your pets. Um, I do that sometimes with my pets. Uh, there's some um, there's some YouTube channels where they're watching uh, squirrels play or birds or something like that. I, I turn that on for my pets sometimes. Um, actually, I just turn that on and have it playing in the background for myself while I'm working or something like that. The dogs seem to enjoy it. I like the nature sounds. There's at least one place on the internet where you can watch a horse farm. Um, you know, the horses aren't always out there. Because uh, sometimes they're, they're out doing other things. But if you're lucky, you can catch horses playing in a field, which is kind of cool. Yeah, maybe. Um, I appreciate that because I can. Um, I, I I really do. Like, part of it is the time, and then part of it is like I don't. I, I guess yeah. But probably, if I if I spent more time on these pictures, I can, I can maybe get more details out of them, refine them more. Um, I have to wonder about that because like I have a bunch of pictures that I've done that. I could revisit, you know, like th things aren't closed out. Like, uh, like I have a, a rough painting that I did, uh, recently that I put up, you know, just because it's like, you know, documenting progress and stuff like that, but there's really no reason why it's closed out. I feel like I could come back to that picture because it's pretty rough and, and I feel like I could refine it and, um, you know, get it someplace special. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe I'll do that sometime. Maybe instead of starting a new project on a, on one of these live streams, I'll instead pick something that I've already done and just work on it some more and see if I can, uh, make it better. I like that idea. Actually, I should probably do that because most people, they don't just sit down and spend two hours and crank out a picture. They, they really sit down and spend six, 10 you know, sometimes all week or more. Um, some people have paintings that they've been working on for like months. Uh, they're usually much bigger than this. This is nine by 12. Um, but yeah, you know, maybe I should do that. I always like the idea of, um, you know, like uh, Bob Ross, you know, uh, 
he would sit down and create a full painting um, in one episode. I always, I always like that, and I think that that's, that's pretty cool. And again, one of my goals is to actually do this in public, like at, like, I don't know, like a street fair or something like that. Almost like those caricature artists that you see. But instead I'm doing like, I don't know, like realism. Um, and of course, then you have to be pretty quick. So. Um, yeah, I, I would like to be quick, but yeah, I should probably uh, try the other way as well. But also, you know, I don't mind, I don't mind the quick uh, art style. I, I actually like it. I like it. I like impressionism. I like uh, expressionism. Hey, Marble Rose. How's it going? Hopefully, as you can see, we're doing a horse. <laughs> Hopefully, that's what it looks like. But yeah, I, I you know, I, I don't think I'm going to give up on trying to do quick pictures because I, I really think that that's uh, where I want to be. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I want to I want to be able to do like quick uh, pictures where I can like just crank out a picture in a reasonable amount of time while somebody waits. Um, but I, I really should branch out and, and challenge myself and try to do something that does span several days as well. Um, probably the longest picture or longest amount of time that I've had the patience to do is uh, I'll start something one night and then I'll, uh, I'll finish it up the next morning. And there's two reasons for that, actually. One is I said I would like I, I'm doing like a live stream or something and I'm working on something and I didn't get it finished and I promised people uh, I'll, I'll finish up in the morning. I'll come back and I'll, I'll show you guys how it looks. Um, but then also unfinished work, man, um, uh, that just kind of like gnaws at me, right? Like, I don't like leaving things unfinished. Um, it, it kind of like bothers me. I obsess about it. I'm like, man, I just gotta get that done. So that's, that's probably a character flaw of mine. So. I think this is starting to look like a horse. Um, let me see if I can get some highlights in here. So, um, again, the process is you come in, you start with your uh, uh, charcoal powder just to get some uh, tone down. Then you come back and you kind of re refine some of the shadows. And then you come in with like a kneadable eraser and just kind of lift up some of that charcoal, exposing some of the lighter areas to get some highlights. And then there's like a third step on tone paper like this, um, you know, whether you tone it yourself or you buy it toned. And that is um, you come back and add extra highlights with uh, a white pencil, which I will be doing before too long. It's just not there yet. But yeah. What, I, what I'd really like to do is do m more paintings. And I know paintings really require some patience. Uh, I've tried a few. I get going for a couple of hours. And then I'm like, I got to call it done uh, just to move on. But it ain't done. Uh, there's like, it's missing a lot of detail. It's really just kind of blocked out or something. Um, and that that's not, that's not cool uh, to... To paint, you probably do need to set aside several days for the project, just with drying time and stuff like that. But also, it it helps to like do some work on something and then kind of put it to the side, so that when you come back to it, you have like a fresh outlook on it and you can fix little mistakes. Like I do that all the time. Um, th I did that today. I I did a picture, and um. I thought it was done, um, and uh, so I hit stop on the record, uh, or the re record, <laughs> that's, that's not the right way to pronounce that. I, I hit stop on recording, and I'm like, oh, dang it, I see this other thing that I want to fix. Well, I want to document all of it, so I don't really want to, um, 
I don't really want to not record it. Um, but I also don't want to start it up and have like another clip that I have to splice into the video and stuff. Anyway, long story short, I ended up finishing it up off camera, but I don't like doing that. But that's that's the way it always goes. I, I finish something or I finish something, right? I, I think I'm done with it. And uh, it's not until like later on that I'm like, oh, man, I, I messed up that thing. So I'll, I'll actually show you a picture here real quick. Um, so like. I, I did this picture earlier today and uh, I thought it was done. I thought I was happy with it. But if you notice the chin here is off, it, it's a little bit off to the right. It should be a little bit over, right? So if I, if I had the, um, like the extra time, I would go back and fix that, but I've already put this video out there, so I can't change it now. This is like one of my mistakes. Um, but that's something I would have, uh, I would have fixed. Just to kind of give an example of what I'm talking about, where I wish I wish I had that kind of uh, patience to uh, to do something and then come back to it later. Um, just let it sit for a moment and not obsess about it and not obsess about having it finished and and all of that jazz. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Marvel Rose. You guys are so nice. You guys, you guys should be like, Jeremy, that, that work sucks. You should be embarrassed. You guys are always so nice. I appreciate it. So like, you should hide your, your head in shame. You should not be putting crap like that on the internet. I don't know. I, I think the picture turned out okay, but that man, that, that chin, that chin bothers me. One of these days you're going to come in and, um, yeah um yeah i i think to be an artist you do have to obsess a little bit that is true that's how you get your details in you know you obsess about it I'm actually going to add some shading down through here so that I can kind of highlight the um, the different tone here. Like people look at art and they're like, oh, look at all those details. You spent so much time. No, we just scribble. Do a lot of scribbling. But I, I kind of want to create some shadow down here so that I can show some contrast between the uh, the background and the horse's body. Plus, I just like, you know, the soft shapes and stuff like that. Well, yeah, so like um, I, I notice things, um, but see, Okay, so this is important, right? So like, um, I don't notice these things when I'm drawing them, like the, the chin. Obviously, if I, I noticed it, I would have fixed it, right? Um, so I don't notice it while I'm working on it. But as soon as I post it somewhere, somebody else is looking at it fresh, right? Um, so like, they didn't spend the time drawing it or anything like that. So they're evaluating it for the first time. So they're naturally going to find mistakes that I didn't notice when I was working on it um, just because they're coming at it new. And I think that's the benefit of like letting it sit and marinate overnight. Right. So like if I had just taken a break from it and come back to it like an hour or two later or even a day or so, then I probably would have noticed that as well. And I could have fixed the mistake before, you know, putting it out there in public, but I don't do that. I, 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 spend time on doing a picture and then I just post it almost immediately, which is not the right way to go about it. So if you're looking for a pro tip, even though I'm not a pro, um, I do recommend um, letting your work sit for a minute before you call it done. 
And I kind of, I, I kind of try to do that. Like I, I sit back and I look at a picture and see if there's any last minute changes I want to do to it. But really you should spend more time than just kind of casually evaluating it. I think that's good advice. You think I should switch careers and go to radio? I hate my voice. What are you talking about? I hate my voice. Or are you saying like, um, oh, maybe you're saying I'm ugly and I've got one of those faces for radio. I get it. I, I see what you're saying. I'm just kidding. You're probably not saying that. But um, I, I, I don't think I would like doing radio. I don't like my voice. Oh, piece of something here. So as you as you can see, I'm constantly uh, putting down marks and then uh, and then um, <laughs> face for radio. <laughs> ah, you guys funny. Yes, it's so nice. Well, I appreciate you guys giving me a roast and not talking bad about my picture. And I don't care if you guys talk bad about me. Just don't talk bad about my picture. I'm just kidding. I, I appreciate criticism. Um, to be honest with you, I accept criticism pretty well, I think, because if you point out a flaw, like in a picture that I'm doing, once I notice it, I'll probably actually agree with you. Um, and then, you know, I, how could I be upset if you're right? Like if, if, uh, if a picture is flawed and I can fix it, I want to fix it. If it's flawed and there's nothing I can do about it, well, you know, that's, that's the breaks. That's how it goes sometimes. But certainly if you, if, um, you know, like if you, I mean, if you're wrong, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have that argument, but, um, if you're right, then yeah, I'll, I'll be the first to acknowledge it. Like here on this picture, I think I need to refine a few things to get the, uh, proportions right. Like there's this shape that kind of comes down through here. So it's not like a hard line, though. <laughs> I don't mind if you guys rip on my artwork. I don't got in mind if you guys rip on me. Um, part of the reason I do this channel is uh, I do think it's important. So like. It, it, I, I haven't mentioned it in a while, so I'll bring it back up. You guys probably have already heard this. So, so I started this channel um, January 1st uh, with the goal of practicing creativity and um, spending, spending more time being creative because I don't get a chance to be creative in other things that I do throughout the day. Um, so I started this channel with the goal of being more creative. And... Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, Mar Marple. Um, so yeah, um, I, I wanted to be more, well, I, I wanted to practice creativity. So that's first and foremost, that was my, my goal, right? So like, it didn't matter if it looked good or if it looked like crap, as long as I'm doing something every day, creative. Um, and the first couple of pictures I did, I, I'm not very happy with them. I, I, I don't think that they turned out all that great at all. Um, but I was happy that I actually made them. So like, I, I was doing artwork every day. That that's cool. You know, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. So that was the primary goal is to just create something, you know, and I, I do recommend that for anybody who's interested in art, all of your stuff, isn't going to come out looking phenomenal. Uh, the important thing is that you work on it, you do it. Um, because I really believe that as long as you practice and stuff every single day, or like frequently, you're going to get better. It's just the way it works. You know, you're going to get better. There's, there's no two ways about it. 
Um, anytime you you focus your your mind on something, anytime you do that muscle uh, hand eye coordination stuff, you're remapping your brain. It's it's going to happen. You're going to get better at drawing um, just by doing it. Right. You don't even have to read a book or do anything special. Just draw. Um, you're going to get better at it. Uh, so that that that's the first and foremost thing. But then the other thing is um, I do kind of want to get better at drawing. So uh, every single time that I come in and start drawing, I want to challenge myself. I want to do something that I haven't done before. I want to push the limit. Uh, I want to do something um, that's a personal challenge. Uh, now that has nothing to do with anybody else. It, it doesn't matter if um, other people like my work or um, or don't. Um, the goal is that I want to uh, I want to improve. So I need to push myself forward for my own sake. And um, so sometimes I pick pictures that uh, yeah push that limit exactly. Um, so sometimes I pick pick. It, pick pictures that I know are going to be challenging, um, that I know I'm going to struggle with. I, I don't feel that way about this one. This is just a horse, but also it, it is a little bit of a challenge for me because it's, um, it's a horse in a different pose than I'm used to. Um, it's got different colors in it than I'm used to. All these shadows and stuff are, are challenging. So I, I think this is a good picture to practice on. Anyway, I forget what, what my point was. Oh, yeah. So I, I am trying to become better. Um, so criticism, that's what I was trying to talk about. Just criticism, criticism in general. When you guys say, like none of you guys are saying this, uh, and I appreciate it. But if you were to say, Jeremy, that picture sucks. That picture, you should be embarrassed that you made it. it is the worst picture I have ever seen on the entire internet. Um, you should, you should, um, you should, you should cry because it's so embarrassing and you should never show your face again. Um, that would not bother me at all. <laughs> it would not bother me because I know that it's better than what I did yesterday. And what I did yesterday is better than what I did the day before. So it, it doesn't matter so much to me, the quality of this work, as long as I'm making little improvements, right? I think that's what matters. As long as I'm making little improvements and I'm getting better, I don't care if a picture sucks or if I did a bad job or um, I failed on a particular picture. None of that matters because overall, I know I'm, I'm, I'm uh, accomplishing my goal. First off, I've already accomplished my goal by even sitting down and trying to draw. That's step number one. Um, once you get past that, I mean, that's all fear-based, right? Um, or you, you were talking about... Um, uh, drawer's block earlier. Uh, what, I mean, these are all real challenges. If you can get over that, you've already, you're already halfway there. Um, so it's already a win. You know, you're just, you already, you already won just by practicing creativity every day, you know? So if the picture itself isn't all that great, it doesn't matter as much, you know? I don't know what my point is. I'm just kind of rambling. But I think somewhere in what I said, there's a good point there. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Basically, don't be so hard on yourself. You already, uh, you already won just by drawing something. And it really, it really kind of depends. Like if this was your job or something and you were expected to like create masterpieces every single day yeah all right then you might want to stress about the quality of the work but this isn't my job i'm doing this for fun so why would i create all that extra stress on myself um by worrying about how well it turned out i mean if it's terrible if it's really really bad i mean it's kind of hard to do like when you're doing a live stream because people are watching you create bad art while you're doing it but if, if it's really bad, just don't post it on the internet. Nobody has to even know. But I, I don't care if it's really bad. That's why I don't mind doing uh, live streams. There's been some live streams that I've done um, where 
the picture just did not turn out the way I intended. Uh, people were nice. Nobody said it sucked, but I knew. I knew it sucked. I knew it sucked really bad. Um, there was um, Indiana Jones. Every time I go to try to draw Indiana Jones, it just doesn't work out, which sucks because I, I love Indiana Jones. It's one of my favorite uh, fictional characters. Every time I go to try to draw Indiana Jones, and you see I haven't done it in a while, but every single time, every single time, it just comes out looking terrible. Um, but you know what? It's posted on the internet, and you can go and look at it. Uh, maybe at some point I'll delete it, but right now, right now it's still up there. I haven't deleted it. I'm trying to um, get my watch hours up and stuff so that YouTube likes my pictures more and shares them with more people so i'm not trying to delete anything anyway <laughs> they probably did think um i know for a fact that some of them do um i don't know if you guys know who uh, vertigo is but he, he comes in sometimes and um he's very polite he won't say to my face but then later on he, he says uh he says something like Wow, I was really nervous for you because, like, I, I don't know, something had, like, an ugly phase. I was working on some sky or something like that. And uh, he uh, mentioned later that he was really nervous and he thought I wasn't going to be able to pull it off. But then ev eventually it came out looking okay and, and then he wasn't as worried anymore. Yeah, I'm sure there's, like, lots of times where uh, people... Um, you know, it, it, so here's another thing that I should mention. So like nothing you do will appeal to everybody. That's just, that's just like human conditions, you know, like not everybody likes a horse. Um, maybe somebody got kicked in the face by a horse and they hate horses. You know, it happens. Maybe people are terrified of horses. So if I draw a horse and for whatever reason, you just don't like horses, you're not going to like this picture. It's, you're just, it's just not going to happen. Um, you're going to look at this picture and be like, oh, oh, he drew a horse. I hate horses. Uh, I will never watch his channel again. Um, I, you know, that's kind of really extreme. I don't think it'd be that bad. But uh, anyway, hopefully you get my point. Uh, not everybody likes everything. So, like, I put these shorts up sometimes. And... Um, and uh, some of them do well, you know, like some of them uh, don't do so well. And I, and I end up looking at them like, well, what went wrong there? Like on the ones that didn't go well. Is it the picture itself? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes the picture I did just doesn't look right. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the first couple of seconds. Uh, so I always do like 30 second shorts whenever I make a short. And, um, you know, sometimes the first couple of seconds of that short is the ugly phase of the picture. It doesn't look good um, during those first 15 seconds or whatever. So uh, people will probably see that and be like, oh, this is going to be a terrible picture. Why would I waste 30 seconds of my life on this picture? And they just kind of scroll away before the picture actually develops. You know, like this picture here, this, this picture, if I did it um, as a short, it'll probably be a good couple of seconds into it before it actually ends up looking like a horse that's just the way it goes so i can see them not liking it for that reason but also maybe they just don't like the song i picked you know i pick songs that i like music that i listen to the music that i think um might match match the picture I, i'm doing so like if there's like a high energy picture i'll try to find a uh, uh like a high energy song to go with it uh sometimes it's hip-hop not everybody likes hip-hop you know, like I don't listen to hip hop a, a ton myself, but if it's a high energy uh, picture where I really like want the people to feel excited about it, um, I hate hip hop has a lot of like songs that are really energetic like that. So I'll pick a hip hop song and um, and uh, add that to it. And, you know, if they don't like the music, maybe they'll give it a, a like a thumbs down or something. It has nothing to do with my picture. Um, conversely, some of the times, uh, I put these, uh, shorts up and they do really well. And I know it's not the picture. I know they just like the song, you know, um, that's the way it goes. 
Uh, I did a picture of uh, Cosmo, uh, the space dog from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And I put it up on Reddit. Usually, uh, Reddit, Reddit is tough on artists. Like, if your picture isn't, like, perfect, the, the like, well, you, maybe you won't get, like, a ton of downvotes, but you certainly won't get that many upvotes. Anyway, so I put this picture up, uh, this picture of Cosmo, and I got, like, 700 uh wait i started off with 700 it ended up going to like a thousand upvotes and everything it's not it's not the picture i drew that they're upvoting they're upvoting the character that i drew they they're upvoting um cosmo the space dog because cosmo is uh, adorable and uh that, that's just the way it goes you know sometimes they hate my pictures because of um some reason that has nothing to do with me and sometimes they like my pictures because of something that has nothing to do with me it's just the way it goes anyway kind of got off on a tangent there point is what was my point <laughs> point is don't beat yourself up sometimes people don't like your picture and it has nothing to do with you maybe it's a song maybe it's the subject matter uh, there are people that, oh, here's another funny one. So, um, I like to draw dogs. I, I draw dogs, uh, more often than, uh, any other kind of animal, um, including horses, even though there's a ton of horses around where I live, uh, I should probably be drawing them more, but I draw a lot of dogs. Um, I don't do a lot of cats. So the funny thing is I drew a cat that I, I thought looked really good. I thought it looked just like the cat picture that I was drawing it off of. I was so happy with it. It looked like it, it totally looked like a cat. Um, totally looked like the cat that I was drawing. So I put it up there and I'm like, why is this not getting as much love as my dog pictures? It's just as technically correct. It, it, it looks good. It looks like the uh, thing that I was trying to draw. I really believe it's just that people don't like cats as much. Um, like, if you draw a dog, people will like a dog picture better than people will like a cat picture. And it has nothing to do with the quality of the work or anything like that. It's just that people like dogs more. It's just the way it goes. Now, don't get me wrong. If your picture sucks, your picture sucks. I'm just saying there may, there may be other reasons why people don't like your pictures if, if uh, people are uh, criticizing it. So I don't think criticism personally. That was my overall point. I don't, I don't think of it personally. If you don't like my picture, it's not me that you don't like. It's my picture you don't like. So why should I be upset? Um, if, if anything, it was... It, it was a temporary inability to create something that you like. Maybe I'll create something that you like later. That's, that's my outlook with that. Also, it's kind of funny. So I, I should add, um, looks like there's a little bit of a delay on my camera. Um, I, I'll also add, it, it's so funny. Every time I do something um uh, hey golden key growers um every time i do a picture that i personally like that i'm really proud of that i i'm happy to share with the internet people don't like it every time i do something that i hate like i personally think like oh, i'm gonna post this up even though i'm not happy with it um that's that's the ones that people seem to like i don't get it i really don't so maybe i just have bad taste in art Like, I'll, I'll post a picture of, uh, like, I really like the source. I think it's turning out great. Um, chances are, because I like it, somebody's going to dislike it. Um, there was a picture, um, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, uh, but I will confess that there is a picture I did as a joke. Uh, I did it, it, it only took me like 15 minutes to draw. So if you go through all my pictures, you can try to figure out which one only took me 15 minutes to draw. But I did as a joke. Um, I was like, uh, I'm going to post this up because I guarantee you this picture that is garbage, people are going to like. People are going to like it because I hate it. And sure enough, this picture I posted as a joke, like only took me 15 minutes to draw, kind of rushed through it, kind of half-assed it, didn't really like it. 
Post it up, and guess what? It was a huge success. People loved it. That's just the way it goes. It's so weird. It's so weird. Long story short, you can't let YouTube tell you whether your pictures are any good or not. You can't let random strangers on the internet tell you whether your pictures are really good or not. Um, uh, it, it's a whole host of factors. These are things I tell myself, at least. I, I don't know if I believe it. Uh, do you sell the work you do? Um, not really. Like, this is mostly like uh, just a personal growth project. Uh, I have done some commissions for people. Um, you know, just a handful uh, because they really wanted me to. Or, um, I take that back. I think most of the commissions I did, I actually said I would do it for free. And then they ended up paying for it anyway. Uh, but no, I uh, maybe at some point I will. Like, um, I started an Etsy shop. I just never put any listings up. But at, at some point, it would be kind of cool to, like, sell some of the stuff that I do. But I'm not, I'm not really focused on that. And I don't think I've created any pictures that I think people would just want to buy just because they like the picture. I think, I think the market is really, like, custom pictures, like custom port pet, uh, pet, custom pet portraits. Sorry, I've been drinking wine. Um. So probably, yeah, at some point I'll, I'll do commissions. But really my goal is, um, when if you make this short, it better get at least 2,000 likes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I guarantee you it probably won't. But it would be cool if it does. Well, there's a perfect example. So, like, what would it take to get this picture to get 2,000 likes? It, it's not going to happen. But you'll go and see some other picture that you know, isn't as nice as this horse. This is a pretty horse, right? Um, that one's, that other picture has like a million likes on it. It has nothing to do with the quality of the picture. The likes cannot tell you whether a picture is any good or not. So just abandon that as a metric for evaluating your art. Don't, don't worry about the likes. Don't worry about whether YouTube's pushing it out. Um, their algorithm doesn't know whether your picture's good or not. Um, you just gotta give it up. Anyway, back to the uh, the commission thing. So, like overall, like uh, my long term goal would be to get in a position where I'm doing pet portraits for people for free, um, because like something else is supporting that or something like that. I don't, I don't want to charge uh, people for pet portraits, but I want to create pet portraits. And uh, there, there's a conflict there, obviously. Like, if you don't charge for pet portraits, everybody's going to want you to do a pet portrait. And then you're not going to have time to do any pet portraits. Or you're going to be, like, swamped with them and stuff like that. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I do have, like, an Etsy shop. I just don't have anything listed up there. I, uh... I do commissions, but I don't actively uh, try to find commissions or anything like that. So I, I think this is pretty good on the highlights for now. Uh, I want to switch to the white pencil um, and start getting some of the... So what, what you've got now is you've got all the shadows in here. You've got some midtones. I may beef up some of these shadows as I go along. Like through here probably should be more shadows. Um, but you've got the shadows. You've got the midtones. And now, because it's toned paper, you wouldn't be doing this on white paper. On white paper, you would lift up with the uh, kneadable eraser all these different areas, exposing the white. And then that's the best you can do as far as like um, uh, highlights. But because it's toned paper, because I took that time to paint uh, the uh, paper to begin with, now I can actually come in and add some white marks over like this orangish area here to create like this blaze on this horse. And um, this gives you the opportunity to really add some extra details that you may not have been able to add when you're just like throwing down like soft shapes of charcoal or lifting with a kneadable eraser. A kneadable eraser, you can form any way you want, but it's really hard to get it to form you know, enough where you're getting um, um, the fine point that you would have with like a, a pencil. 
they do sell like really fine point erasers. I just don't have one. So what I do is I do my best with the um, with the eraser lifting up that charcoal that I put down, but then I come back with this uh, this white pencil, white charcoal pencil. Um, it, it's called white charcoal pencil, but I mention every single time just because it it's a pet peeve of mine. It's not technically charcoal because charcoal is always black. Uh, this is a pastel pencil. It's a it's a soft pastel pencil. And um, it allows you to come in and really get that white blaze. I'm going to say it again because I can. Uh, it, it allows you to come in and get that white blaze across his uh, face. Yeah. Um, horses horses have a lot of variety in their blazes. Um, they're, they range everywhere from like a little snip on the nose to like this is, um, uh, what is this one called? I forget what this one's called, but anyway, this one takes up like most of the face. Um, they they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, I don't think it's specific to the breed of horse. Like, like all breeds would have different varying shapes of uh, blazes, but it's it's definitely a fun part to draw, right? So like you have this this white on all of this shadow. And um, like here, I'm trying to get it in between these uh, these hairs that are coming down over the face. But it's definitely a fun part to draw because it really stands out. The blaze stands out. And I've actually got another... Um, so like here in the center, I've got this other stick, which is also white pastel. And it looks like that's a little bit brighter. So I'll use that to kind of come in and fill it in, but uh, certainly on the edges. Now you could use this instead of a pencil because it's got like these sharp edges. You can use these sharp edges to kind of create fine lines. Um, like I'll go ahead and do that just to kind of demonstrate. But it's, it's totally, a, uh, it looks like my camera's lagging a little bit, but it's a totally different experience than drawing with like regular like pencils, right? So like whenever I'm drawing with a uh, graphite pencils, I almost always use a mechanical pencil just because I really like being able to do those fine lines that I can't do like with charcoal or these other pencils. Um, but here, here you're sort of painting, right? In fact, um, uh, some people actually call uh, charcoal like charcoal painting um, certainly pastels are called pastel paintings because you're going above and beyond just kind of drawing you're mixing a whole bunch of different um, uh, things together to create essentially a painting now I, I consider it drawing personally but uh, I see why they they call it painting I think they're just being snobs to be honest with you they want to consider themselves painters but but they have a, a valid argument. You are really actually painting when you're doing this. So definitely have that really white streak coming down the nose. Um, I don't mean for it to be as thin as it is. So let me broaden it in some places. Um, if you're if you're looking for like a tip um, just for drawing in general, like you're not used to drawing uh, like this, um, notice how I'm not I'm not holding the pencil like this, right? Which is what most people do uh, when they're writing or drawing or something like that. I hold it out here almost like a paintbrush. It, one is so that I don't have to put my hand on the uh, charcoal and get smudge all, like you can see there's already some charcoal here on my hand, but I don't want to mess up my picture. Um, so I, I hold it at the very end and I reach across the page and you actually have a lot more control over it if you can get into the habit of doing this, um, treating it like a uh, paintbrush. So you get to reach across the page and make your marks almost like you're using a paintbrush. And it, it 
it takes a little while to get used to it, but I've gotten in the habit of it and it is so much, so much better, I think. So there is also some white along the nose here. This kind of follows it up all the way up the nose. So I'm going to go ahead and pencil that in. Now, this thing I'm doing, you can actually get uh, pastel pencils uh, in a variety of different colors. Um, or I, I don't know if you should really be using colored pencil with charcoal. I guess probably that would work. But most people use like some version of pastel pencils or pastels in general. Um, so they do come in like a bunch of different colors. Like technically I could be using a yellow here to catch the light. I'm just using the white out of convenience. But I've got a whole set of different colored pastel pencils that um, would probably work very well. Like I could do a kind of like cream color that might match the, um, the color of the horse a little bit better. But I think this is fine. This is, this is kind of traditional um way of working with uh charcoal so like use charcoal on toned paper now here i'm toning my own paper with uh, acrylic paint but uh you can buy toned paper uh it comes in like gray and tan and probably like a blue i think but if you get toned paper this is the traditional way of working in charcoal you uh you put down your charcoal and then you come back and you make highlights with uh with a white charcoal pencil so even though I could do color, uh, I'm not doing it. I'm just trying to be traditional here. But at some point, I probably will expand and kind of practice with uh, using colored pastel pencils instead of just doing white. But I, I like the effect here. I think the white looks good. Um, and it looked pretty good in my other pictures as well. That So I'm, I'm really trying to practice this uh, this the style, I guess, of uh, drawing where I come in and I do that underpainting and acrylic. I've done a couple of pictures recently where I've done that and I like how it looks. And I'm trying to create a collection of them that all kind of like match in, in, consistently in style and so on. And I, if I if I am successful in that, maybe I will start selling pictures because I'll, I'll put them up for like prints or something like that because it, they should all be consistent and they should all kind of like match or something like that. And I can, I can picture like, I don't know, like a vet office or something ordering like the collection of them uh, to hang in the vet office. <laughs> that's my, that's my imaginary scenario though. Man, that camera is like lagging a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, so. And it's skipping around. Oh, well, hopefully, hopefully that's not too annoying. I find that when I record video while also streaming, it kind of lags a little bit. I have to fix that. I think I just need a better computer. So most of the snout is dark, but you get some of this like white as it uh, kind of comes out. And then there's this other little snip marking here. I'm going to kind of hint at it, but I'm not going to worry about it too much because I think I think the end viewer is not going to be able to see that, that there's that snip there. So I'm just going to ignore that, actually. So I really like doing the, uh, the white part of this process because that's really where you start getting all your details. The, um, you know, like the, the muscles in the neck and in the face and so on. Those are pretty solid objects that are so large that there's really no details to them where the light plays off of these uh, features. That's where, that's where the details are. That's the cool part. That's the part where you add it and everybody starts looking at it like, Oh wow, that actually looks cool. And I'm right there with you guys. Like I look at this and I'm like, Oh, that looks cool. You know, even though I'm the one drawing it. And then sometimes you get, um, wait for the camera to pass it. All right. Sometimes you get uh, white, uh, I mean, charcoal on the end of your white uh, pencil. So you kind of have to like rub it off uh, else it's going to be kind of like muddy. Oh, and notice how I always hold two pencils in my hand. Uh, I've got the black and I've got the white because I might come back and do touch-ups with the black, uh, do touch-ups with the white interchangeably. So I'm always holding the two pencils together. 
just little tips about my process. So now that you see that I cleaned it, it's actually coming off a little bit whiter than it would have if I hadn't cleaned it. Just, you know, little little things I've learned doing this for a bit. By a bit, I mean like a couple months. Honestly, it, it surprises me still. I've only been doing this stuff since um, since January. So like, I'm a six month year old artist. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the progress. Like my first picture I did on a live stream. It's nothing I'm proud of. Other people might look at it and be like, oh, that's cool. Um, but that's not me. I, I was not happy with it. But I put it up anyway because, you know, that's part of the process. Got to document it. Because, like, at the end of the year, I really hope that I can go back and look at all these videos and say, hey, look at what I learned this year. Look, look what I did. <laughs> Thank you, Marvel. I appreciate that. I really don't want to sell pictures. Um, I want I want to be able to give them away. And I think I might be able to pull that off. I, I was thinking about starting up a website where I just accept donations um, where people can kind of like pay it for it. You know, like you go to Starbucks sometimes and you go into the line and you find out that the person in front of you paid for your uh, drink. That's kind of how I want to do art. Or, you know, if this channel blows up and a lot of people watch it, hey, tell your friends. So, like, if a lot of people watch this channel, you know, that that that's where I can get all the supplies and stuff. YouTube will give me money for uh, having a successful channel, and I can use that to buy all the art supplies to do people's pictures. My dog's dreaming over here, like, chasing some random imaginary dream squirrel. Because I can't. <laughs> this is roast Jeremy night. I, I can I can tell. What do you mean I'm not that good? I'm, I'm, this is an amazing horse. What are you talking about? This horse is awesome. Love this horse. This is my favorite horse in the entire world. I'm going to call this horse... Um, Billy. This is Billy the horse. Billy the horse is the best horse. Um, I do like working with uh dry medium so like I, I really want to get into painting i just haven't gotten to the point where i feel comfortable doing that yet um it is something i i'm working on as i have time but you know like i have daytime projects as well um so i don't find that i get a lot of time to paint but i really do like working with these dry mediums um like uh charcoal and pastel and just getting your hands all dirty. Like, I love that part of it. Like, I love, like, most people are turned off by charcoal just because it is so messy. I love it. I love getting my hands dirty. It's like, you know, if you were planting a garden or something like that, you want to get your hands dirty. And then at the end of the day, you're like, wow, look at all these plants that grew, grew because I got my hands dirty. That's how I look at it. Yeah, you know this horse is dope. You can you can sit there and make fun of this horse all you want. You know it's dope. I mean, it's 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 really not the best horse out there, but I'm happy with it. I think it's cool. So this is a point where, like traditionally, like if you look at some of my other pictures. Uh, I have to actually stop myself. Um, I have the tendency to go ahead and add white through here and kind of like highlight all these different things. 
less is more. Like you want a lot of details in the face because you want the viewer's eyes to look at the face. Down here, totally unnecessary to add a lot of details. Now I might add, you know, like a snippet of highlight here or there or something like that, just to define some form or whatever. But then I'll kind of blur that out because I don't want that to be the focal uh, focal point. In fact, I'm not even going to add like much detail down there because I'm not worried about it. Instead, I want people to be looking up here at the horse's face. So I am going to add some highlight up here. Just to kind of like, you know, define that a little bit better. Give something for the uh, viewer's eyes to uh, look on. But even here, I don't want that to be the focal point. So I'll kind of like leave that a little bit muddy instead of like making that as bright, bright white as it can be. Now, totally different story when it comes to the eyes. The eyes, you definitely want people to look at it. So if there's any highlights in the eyes, um, like you'll see people do pet or like just portraits in general and they'll come back um, like in watercolor or something like that. And they'll come back with like a gel marker and add like white highlights to the eyes and stuff because they know that that's what people use to uh, focus on something. Like you want it to be super bright through here just so that the eyes come and linger on that. Yeah. So th these are, you know, like I didn't go to art school, but I have like read books and stuff like that and picked up a, a few things here and there. And, um, you know, drawing people's eyes is, is really an important part of uh, the success of a picture. Like if everything was just kind of like there together, um, there was no like variation in value. There was nothing, um, and by value, I mean like, uh, you know, the shadows and the highlights and stuff like that. If there was no variation, one, it's going to look like terrible. Uh, but two, the, the eyes, when somebody looks at it, they have nothing to like draw their attention to it. So like, I want, even though like in the reference picture, there's no like light here in the eye. I'm going to add a little bit of highlight here right across the top just because I want I want people to look at the eye, right? So even though there's no highlight in the reference picture, I'm going to add some just because I, I, I can and just because I want people to look at that. And then I kind of want... Um, hair to be highlighted as well so that it kind of creates depth over the face so I, anyway i know i'm supposed to do these things and sometimes i forget and stuff like that but like it it's nice talking to you guys um i appreciate you guys being here uh not just because you're like watching the show which you know helps me out um but i like um I like talking to you guys because talking to you guys reminds me of some of the things that I would probably forget if I was just sitting here drawing them myself. Like, like I may forget to add these highlights and stuff like that, but because you guys are here and I'm kind of trying to demonstrate why we do that, it, um, it helps me to create a better picture, if that makes sense. Pretty horse. All right, so there is some white back here and I'm gonna add it just to kind of define this uh, this next structure, but I'm gonna do it really lightly because I don't I don't want people to look too, too much. Like, don't look at this, look over here. <laughs> so this is, you would think that this is the mane of the horse, but it's really not. The The hair flops over. This is all neck here. And I have to make sure that it stays smooth so that the viewer doesn't get confused. I don't want the viewer to think that this is hair because it's not. Well, it technically is hair, but it's a smooth hair that you find on a horse. But 
Yeah, like I said, I live in horse country, so I have to draw horses or else um, people people will be like, why don't you why don't you draw horses? And it's like, just because that's where I live, you know. There's so many horse farms around here. If you're if you're gonna go to like a um, like an art fair or something, um, the name in the content. Oh, um, if you go to like an art fair or something like that, people are people have the expectation. So there's two things. So this is I live in Kentucky. If you guys didn't know, um, and there's two things in Kentucky that everybody knows, and that is horses and bourbon. So you have to you have to draw the horses. You can draw things related to like the bourbon industry. You know, it, it, it's like anywhere else. So like if you live in a coastal town and you're an artist or you're trying to be an artist, there's an expectation that you're going to draw seascapes, you know, for tourists who come to town or whatever. Well, around here it's horses. So like if you come to central Kentucky, um, you're probably here at least in some small way for like the horse industry that we've got here with, between horse races and horse competitions and, and so on. Or you're just here for like agritourism where you're just like touring horse farms and checking them out and stuff like that. So, so if you stopped in at a gallery, you're going to expect to see horses. Just the way of it. So there's some detail here in the ear. Really hard to, it's probably not going to show up well on camera, but some dark areas in here. But because it's so dark, there's not like a ton of detail. So um, I, I shouldn't say detail, I should say information. So there's some information in this year that I want to convey. Because that's really what it is. It's like, you know, there's a lot of information in the face that I want to convey. There's a little bit of information down here that I want to convey. There's a little bit of information here that I want to convey. That's what it's all about. Like, what information do you want to convey as an artist? Um, some information you have to convey so that the person knows that it's a, so knows that it's a horse, and then some of it's optional, and you get to uh, pick and choose. Uh, that's where the artistic discretion comes from. You know, you can choose whether or not to. Uh, Man, my camera's really lagging. This sucks. So, for example, I just put some highlights here because I want to convey that that's actually part of the um, the main coming through. And not just like, I don't know, like bone structure or muscles or whatever. So that's that's all it, that's all there is to it. Um, like I said, I'm I'm learning myself as I go along. Um, but little things like that are easy to forget, but it's so important, you know. Like when you're when you're approaching a picture, it helps to like strategize like, well, what information do I need to convey here in order for it to be a su successful picture? First off, I've got to convey that it's a horse, right? So like, what do I need to do to make sure that they know that it's a horse and not like, I don't know, like a deer or like a lion or a dog, right? I mean, there's similar shapes here. Um, if, if I didn't put the pointy ears and I didn't put the long face, you could easily think that it was a dog. You could probably still think it's a, a dog if I if I did, didn't convey some of this information. Let's see. This is tough because I have to reach across the page and I don't want to like actually touch anything. So like here I want to convey that there is a flap on the ear and it kind of comes up a little bit like that. I don't have to go overboard on it, but I want to show that it's there. And then go back to this eraser. I feel like this ear is not supposed to be all dark. Should have lifted some of that charcoal up. Let's 
So that was to uh, create some uh, additional form in that ear because like it was kind of all dark. Um, I want to show this uh, three dimensional object. Yeah, I think that looks better. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Maybe not so much up. Maybe a little bit inside there. Lift some of that charcoal up so that yeah, that's cool. Neat. And then you know I like to put in like little straggly hairs too. Like there's some straggly hairs right here. I do think that this would probably be better if I used um like a yellow pencil or something instead of this white pencil. The white's cool, but I think if I used the yellow on this on this um on this brown, that would really pop. There's some fur in here. I don't know why I call it fur, it's a mane. It's actually literally hair, like horses hair. Um so the irony is that some um some paintbrushes are actually made out of horse hair. So like you're using the, the horse's own hair to paint the horse. That'd be funny. Like little straggly hairs in here. Okay. Like little fluffs coming off here. Alright. So pretty happy with this. Let's see, we're an hour and 40 minutes into this. Let me take a moment and look at it and see what little last things can I do. So I like this. I, I feel like if I had more time, one of the things I would like to do is maybe put in some soft shapes in the background, you know, like maybe a, a rail fence or something like that. that those are things that are out in horse fields. Um, let's see, I looked up some of this. I feel like that's way too dark. Yeah, put in some soft shapes in the background. I did that with the German Shepherd picture, and I liked how that turned out. But I, I don't, I don't think I have the time to do that, or like a clear plan of what I would do. So I'm just going to drink wine and look at this horse for a moment. Let's see. I think I can add two little white touches through here. Because, like, this is the part where if I had a really fine, kneadable eraser, I would be lifting some of this charcoal that I put down up. But I don't, so I have to... Like, horses have really short short fur. But it is fur, so I kind of want to convey some of that texture. Yeah, I think I'm about done with this, actually. I might call this the drop some of that. Thank you, Marble. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm happy with how it turned out. So my own like style, I wish I there was something I could do about it. It does come off a little bit rough. Like I feel like it's just the nature of it. So like if you were drawing photorealism with like um with pencils or like colored pencils or something you could start on the eye and work away from the eye and have like a lot of uh control over what you're doing but because i i work sort of like a painter um when i'm drawing where i'm dealing with a bunch of shapes and then i refine those shapes 
you're going to end up with some rough rough edges and stuff like that. I, I like it. I think it's a cool style. It's not for everybody, though. Oh, thank you. I like being your favorite YouTuber. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it showed up because of the sticky raid and, like, I got you by creating good art. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. That's how all my subscribers come through. They come through like, oh, this is going to be a joke. And then, like, they stay because, like, oh, it's actually fun. Hey, that's cool, though, you know? But you know what? I, I subscribe to Marvel, too, because Marvel creates pretty cool artwork. So I, I enjoy watching uh I, I enjoy watching those shorts. So it's a uh, reciprocal. You got um usually when I I um I uh, have a subscriber, uh if uh if they have a channel, I'll I'll go and check it out. You know, because like I think it's important for people to um to support other artists on here like this there's this like neat little artist community here on youtube which is pretty awesome like i know that there's like some superstars in that community i am not one of those um probably none of you guys are uh, but us little guys yeah we got to support each other so like if you've got a channel and you watch my show give me a heads up i want to i want to check it out uh, once I get some, um, you know, I don't know if I ever will actually, but if I get some subscribers and, and so on, and people are watching this on the regular, I'll start promoting people's channels just because I think that's important. You know, I'll be sending people on raids. Honestly, before you guys showed up, I didn't know what a raid was. <laughs> I'm just in here drawing pictures and suddenly a bunch of people were in here but that's cool yep uh, I haven't been on YouTube long enough to uh, know all the different traditions but anyway yeah I think this horse is about done yeah I'm, I'm gonna call this done Oh, you like making mascot logos. Oh, that's cool. For like um for like teams and stuff like that. Famous Roblox uh, YouTuber. Um I was thinking about maybe going on Twitch as well. I think I can um like I'm I'm talking about maybe like uh simulcast streaming where I'm on both at the same time, but my camera doesn't even catch up with my art most of the time. I'm I'm working on fumes here, guys. I've got this old camera on the phone. Um, but yeah, I, I think Twitch would be kind of cool. Cool. All right. Well, Marvel thinks this looks cool, so I think I'm done with it. You know, once they say it looks cool, you should stop. Uh, you do run the, so this is actually an important tip. Like, it is easy to overwork something. So, like, I'm happy with it, but um, I, I, I continue wanting to tinker with it. But at some point, you know, if you tinker with it too much, you end up adding way too much detail. Mascot logos, well, okay, so yours is probably more like vector artwork where you're, um, you're probably doing it digitally, or I don't know, maybe you're sketching it. I, I'll, I'll check out your channel. But uh, what I'm imagining is that you use like Adobe Illustrator or something like that. Um, that's cool. Um, I'm, I, I've been trying to be more traditional art. Like I, I work in graphic art sometimes. Uh, I know how to use Photoshop, Illustrator, things like that. Uh, but I'm trying to actually get my hands dirty instead of doing like digital. But that's just a personal choice. Um, hey, thanks, kid. I appreciate that. Like, uh, there's nothing wrong with digital. It's just a, it's just a different medium. Um, I'm, I'm just a classic dude, you know. Like, I like, I like to get my hands dirty. I like to use charcoal. I like to use, uh, you know, like hands-on medium. Uh, 
And uh, I like to drink wine or bourbon or something like that while I'm drawing. Probably shouldn't be doing that either. But yeah, that's cool. I'll I'll check out your. Um... Oh, you're not uploading videos for our work. Uh, that's fine too. But yeah, maybe I'll um, maybe at some point, probably not anytime soon. Maybe at some point, I'll do like a uh, video tutorial or something on using um. Uh, illustrator to create like uh, some vector artwork logos things of that nature uh, a lot of my uh, day job is uh, building websites um, so I have to do some graphic arts for that kind of stuff but anyway I'm pretty happy with this horse I think so like one of the things I I think the proportions are good uh, a lot of times I draw like a stubby nose. I don't draw the nose long enough, but I, I think I did a good job here on the proportions. Um, one of the uh, things that I make myself do, which I don't actually recommend, is I like to draw freehand where I'm filling out the proportions as I uh, as I go along. Um, you know, there's definitely easier ways to do that. You can you can like measure things. I'm 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 eyeballing everything. And uh, I mentioned before, the, the reason why is because I'd like to actually go out to the field and draw a horse um, where I'm not going to have, uh, you know, like a, I'm not going to be able to trace the horse if the horse is actually in a field right in front of me or something like that. So, <laughs> Thank you, Tristan. Yeah, so, I mean... Art subjective. Like some people are gonna like things that you don't like, um, and some people are gonna hate things that you you do like. Like like I said, I've been uploading a bunch of pictures that I personally like. I think they're great and everything, and they just don't get a lot of traction on YouTube or on Instagram or whatever. Um, actually, so here here's an example of how YouTube cannot tell you whether your art is any good. So I'll upload the same picture. Uh, the video of making the picture here on YouTube and it'll it'll do okay I guess or whatever and then I'll put the same video the exact same video uh, like the short version um, I'll put the short version up on YouTube it'll get you know X amount of views and then I'll put the same video up on YouTube and it'll get more views or if I put the same video up on Instagram It'll get less views or more views or something like that. The exact same picture on these di three different platforms do totally differently. You know, it's because the algorithm or whatever it is behind the scenes can't tell you whether the picture is good or not. Um, and of course, the more eyeballs that are on it, the more likes it's going to get. Uh, so I don't know. You just got to create art for yourself. And uh, if you like it, you know, post it, and who cares what other people think? That's my philosophy, at least. Who cares? Uh, I appreciate that you guys like this horse, but if you guys didn't like this horse, well, I, I would have made the horse anyway. Oh, airplane and in, uh, in the text layer? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you... Uh, if you do graphic arts, there's probably a lot of jobs out there for making logos. Uh, probably not as many jobs out there for making these horses. So you, you're definitely on the right track. But, you know, the skill set kind of like goes hand in hand. I feel like um, I'm able to create uh, logos for companies uh, because I appreciate art and know some of these, uh, these different drawing uh, things. Like some of the same stuff like... Um, that you learn in graphic arts for making logos, they're the same things that you would uh, use in creating like a comp uh, like a composition for like a horse painting or something like that. It's okay to be jobless too. Being jobless just means you have a lot of free time. That's all. All right, so I think I'm uh, I, I think I'm gonna call this done. I'm gonna end the stream. Uh, if there's any last minute touches to it, I'll probably do it off camera or something like that. But anyway, it's been fun hanging out with you guys. That's good point. All right. So again, thank you very much for hanging out with me. Um, let's see, you go back to this thing. There you go. 
again, thanks for hanging out with me on this uh, Tuesday night. And uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, as you can see, all the pictures are gone off the wall. Um, that's because in my mind, it's a it's a new session. I started this January 1st. Um, here it is June. So all the artwork that was up there, uh, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to decide what pieces I like. And if I like them, I'm going to put them back up. Otherwise, I'm going to fill up the walls with new stuff and it's going to be awesome. So, uh, yeah, so as far as the uh, the next stream, uh, I'll be back on Friday. I usually do these uh, Tuesday nights. I just like playing with these kneaded erasers, so that's what I'm doing. I like rolling them up into little balls and stuff. It's like a stress reliever. Like, you get to just make a big old mess with them. They're so much fun. Anyway, um, so I do these uh, Tuesday nights and Friday nights, um, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, so if you subscribe, um, and ring the bell for notifications, you should get like a notification of that. But otherwise I'll see you guys Friday. It'll be awesome. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do and, you know, give a thumbs up and all that, you know, all the usual stuff, but, um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'll post this up on the uh, community tab, um, as soon as I get off, uh, and then I'll probably make a short out of it as well. Probably post that tomorrow. So. Anyway, dogs need to go out, so I have to hop off. All right, bye. See you Friday. Have a good one.